If you've ever had this feeling that something was terribly wrong with the world that we live in, but you couldn't figure out just what it was, then you've come to the right place. Secret societies, mystery religions, and the Illuminati have been controlling our reality since the beginning of time. But not anymore, because there is an awakening happening, and you are about to become a part of it. Wake up, because this is a call for an uprising. This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. If you haven't heard of this ping-demic, it's time you hear about it. Ping-demic, you ask? Well, you're familiar here in America with contact tracing and how they've wanted us to download these apps and some stores they ask you to give them their, your phone number. I think I made mention of it a while ago, like last summer I went somewhere. And they asked me for a phone number for contact tracing, of course. I gave them a fictional number. I gave them 8675309. And they still didn't even get it because, well, we're walking amongst the clueless. And uh, if you don't know that joke, well, you could look it up. But this pandemic in the UK is helping fill a lot of agendas and a lot of holes, including the food shortage. So what's the pandemic? Well, the pandemic is the social distancing contact tracing app that the government, their NHS, which is the same as our CDC pretty much, is the United Kingdom National Health Service is using. And what they're doing is if you are near somebody, just like in the U.S. with the contact tracing, you get pinged, okay? And if you get pinged, you have to self-isolate for two weeks or 10 to 14 days, something along those lines. So what's happening is there's a craze going on over there where everybody's getting pinged and everybody just is self-isolating. Thus, there's a food shortage. Whoa, that was convenient. Britons are facing a new pandemic. Phones that refuse to stop buzzing. They're calling it the pingdemic. It all started with an app developed by the NHS or the National Health Service. It's basically a contact tracing app. If you have been close to an infected person, the app will ping you. Great technology, but just one problem. Seems everyone in Britain is getting pinged. In the first week of July, half a million people were pinged. They were all asked to self-isolate for 10 days. You can imagine what happened next. People stopped going to work. Instead, they started raiding supermarkets and hoarding essentials. We see over the coming you know, five days, the situation getting worse and worse. And it's almost exponential, the pinging we're seeing. In fact, we've actually lost uh, two distribution sites uh, due to the pandemic, and we're having to staff those from uh, other parts of the UK. The government has assured that there is no need to panic buy, but the pings just won't stop. At some businesses, 50% of the workforce is now in self-isolation. The cheer of Britain's Freedom Day has been replaced by fear. Fear of that elusive ping. But why is the app always on hyperdrive? Is it a technical glitch? Or is the outbreak really that big in the United Kingdom? So the pandemic has led to food shortages because workers who are supposed to deliver the food aren't able to deliver it. People who are supposed to process the food or pick, you know, every, every line that goes to it has people who are affected because they're getting pinged so they're not allowed to leave their home so part of what's happening and this ties into another agenda is they're starting to come out and say well government workers who are jabbed they can go back to work because the country's falling apart domino like dominoes falling people are just everything is is messing up right and there's shortage of gas because the delivery trucks can't bring in gas because the drivers of the trucks are getting pinged, thus having to stay home and are unable to drive the trucks with the gas to the gas stations or whoever else and whatever industry it is. See how perfect this all fits for them and works for them? Now, what should happen here, and I've been joking around a lot lately about a lot of this stuff. This is absolutely, you can't even joke about this. This is where the people need to rise, okay? Because if people push back and start saying, okay, so for just if you hypothetically talk about all this stuff as if it's really going on, right? And there's really a, this huge disease and everyone's getting sick. 
<laughs> and even, even if you believe that, the numbers that they show are so minimal, it shouldn't even matter anyway. But play with their narrative then. Well, is it worth it then? Is it worth it for people not to be able to eat? Is it worth it for all of these resources that people need to be cut off? Or do you risk it and go, well, we still need to have food because, you know, without food, people are going to die. They're not going to be able to eat, right? And then, you know, oh, what are you going to cut into the water supply next and say that there's no water because, you know, the filtration system, the well, you know, oh, but everything's just shut down. All workers can't go and do anything. So nothing can function unless they get jabbed. Well, this is where people need to push back. Because I'll tell you right now, if this comes to America, we will push back. I will push back. And I will take it to the streets personally. And I know a lot of people will. Now, you might say, well, what would happen if there's a pushback? Well, they would have to, if they see people pushing back big time with all of this stuff, what they would eventually do is just their out plan would pretty, be pretty simple. They would just come out and say, oh, well, the numbers are getting better. The numbers are getting better. Oh, everything's gone away. And they would just vanish the whole thing and realize that they needed to start this up at another time period when there's more generations who are brainwashed and don't know anything but getting the shot as if it's a normal thing because they're starting to beat that into kids' heads. That's what I told you about with Sesame Street and um, Teletubbies and all these shows and Muppets talking about it, talking about it, normalizing it for kids the same way they did with that community that's so prideful, thus creating a world that knows nothing other than it and the sickness, the perverse the jabberoo, all this stuff becomes normal day-to-day -day activity. And again, like I've said before too, with the jab, they're going to make it so it's like an annual thing. They're going to have like a health awareness month. I guarantee you, it'll be like a January, a February. You know how they've been doing these months? You know, we have Black History Month, we have Pride Month, the month of this, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There will be a month where it's like, you know, health achievement month, January, February. Everybody goes, they get their annual boost. Everybody gets like a free meal somewhere. Everyone will be, ooh, yay, I'm healthy, I got my shot. That's how they'll wrap it with a bow for these dumber generations. A little gift from Big Brother, you know, you get a little certificate, you can go, you know, do something with it, go bowling, who knows. But it will be how it works. But anyway, back to the pandemic. So this fits perfectly into the narrative of cutting the supplies of foods and cutting all this stuff. They can just use this. Oh, everyone's getting pink. Now, in reality... I mean, what can you do, right? Other than just ignore it, smash your phones, right? But see, people become so dependent on it. And with the NHS saying, look, you know, we're going to do this. And if you get it, you have to go. And if you don't oblige by these rules, you could be arrested. You can be fined. I mean, it's unbelievable what they're getting away with, especially with the statistics they presented. And that's why I've been saying recently how sloppy they are. This whole thing is a sloppy mess. I mean, if they came out and said more, the numbers were even higher, it might help their cause more. They're even giving such low-fruited, low numbers that pe that's what's also making people hesitant to do anything. You know, it's their plan that they created, and they and it's being executed so sloppily because they didn't even think this through as far as, well, maybe we should inflate the numbers really high to make people more concerned. Because people who are on the fence, they're not not getting stuff because people like me and you talking about it and showing you the ridiculousness of it all, they're not getting it because they're not afraid of the statistics and stuff they've shown. And this should be an awakening factor because the statistics they give are so low. Like I said earlier, people should be going, all right, um, is it worth it to shut down and have people self-isolate so we can't get groceries anymore? I mean, you'll die if you don't have water or food, uh, you know, <laughs> and if guys, if, if employees of this can't deliver and make that happen, there's going to be a bigger chain of events that occurs, right? I mean, this is just common sense. And that's what should continue to trigger some somewhat of an awakening. Now, if you're somebody who's in the UK, I hope, and you're on my website at callfornuprising.com, please post anything that you have, any footage, because people in France and the UK are pushing back. They have had enough of this because that was one of the things I'm sure that they talked about when doing the pullback, you know, here's the summer again, here, go have your summer, take the mask off and then doing this. And obviously they're easing, getting people prepared for September. You know, that's why they started in mid July to say, Oh, 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 Delta, Delta, Delta. And then by September they say, okay, everything's back, you know, back to restrictions, mandates will be back. They gave everyone a little taste and they say, look, if you want that back, go and get it, go and get it, go and get it. And they'll just do the same thing they did last year throughout the fall and throughout the winter. 
And again, that's how smoke outs, grind outs work. They just pummel you to death. And then you just go, all right, I guess I'll go get it. That's what's going to happen to people who are on the fringe. But people in the UK, if you're, if you're going to the, you know, people have said they've gone to there's riots at banks, there's riots and stuff going on in the streets. And, you know, the mainstream media is not reporting on it. So if you have anything to share on it, please post it on my website. I, I want to see how the people really are responding because obviously the eyes of the world only go through the television and the internet's scraping stuff like that off YouTube and places like that. So post it on the website if you have anything to share. Now, the question is, is this something that's going to happen here in America? Will people be able, you know, will people put up with it? Now, me personally, I don't have a phone where I can get pinged or contact trace. I don't know how in the world people are okay with this. (laughs) You know, like, oh, you were near so-and-so and and -and so-and-so, so so you need to uh, quarantine. Like, they could just... They can just hypothetically take two plant, you know, take a group of plants, a hundred people, and just label them as Mister X, right? Pay them and say go out and just walk everywhere possible for a week, and then boom, everyone that they do, you know, with the satellite, everyone they trace, that they just get bing, 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 and that's what the statistics show. Like the, the numbers are so ridiculously over the top. It's almost exactly what they needed to do, but they didn't even need to send plants out there. They could just go, all right, we're just going to send pings and we're going to do it in this order. And here's the computer code. And, you know, people with X, Y, Z numbers in their phone will get it. And it'll just keep going and go, we'll get the ping and keep going and going and going. So they're experiencing fuel supplies, food supplies, retail sites are not getting the stuff that they're supposed to get uh, because of the temporary closure because there are no employees to work and there's no product to sell. So even, you know, even companies like BP who are in on, you know, they're all working together to do this because if they really cared about money and doing this, they'd be like, look, I don't, we don't care if you have the thing or not, if you got pinged or not, you know, you go, you go deliver or we find someone who will. I mean, that's how business would work. But BP said the vast majority of the shortages were being resolved and they're trying to resolve it, but they're blaming it on a lack of truck drivers and I, again, I've been covering this with the food shortage, this whole excuse of a lack of employers, employment, I mean, you know, people to go do these jobs. We have like unemployment rates are really high. Uh, you know, yeah, there's nobody that'll go do this job. Uh, you know, so we'll just shut down food, the food industry because we can't hire a delivery man. Huh? Right? So they're tying it in with this whole ping thing. UK workers are required to isolate for 10 days if they test positive or get the ping, which alerts people via an app that they have close contact with someone that tested positive. I I mean, you know, at this point, really? So retailers say the high number of isolating workers is preventing them from fully stocking their shelves. Uh, Food shortages are continuing at an all-time high. Like all other retailers, the situation is becoming increasingly difficult as we have more and more colleagues having to self-isolate after being notified by the track and trace system. And this is just an easy way to shut things down, to shut down food supplies, to shut it all down and to say, look, we'll let these guys go back to work, but they have to get the jab. And that's it's spreading all over, you know, yesterday. And it's not a big deal. But in America, you know, they're using the NFL because the NFL is on a pedestal. Sports are on a pedestal. You know, it's one of the things. Right. They're using it as an example. You know, football players who don't want to get it are going to get fined. I mean, college teams aren't going to be, you know, they're going to get automatic losses for their team if somebody on the team tests positive and they're unjabbed. This is how it's working. And this is when we need to push back and say, screw you. Because, you know, they're not giving anything as far as, you know, the information that they're giving is so minimal and ridiculous that people should not be fearful. And all they're worrying about is cutting out other voices and they're trying to force this into everyone's bodies with these sob stories like the one I posted yesterday on my on my website from CNN with these horrible narratives where it's so ridiculously fake and over the top that they tie all these agendas into one. The actors can't even act. The stories don't even fit the narrative. And, you know, it, it's like <laughs> at this point, at this point, you know, I think they're going to piss enough people off where there is going to be some type of major pushback. So I'd be concerned if I were them because I'm not taking it. We're not getting it. And if they continue to try to do this bull crap where they're going to say, well, there's going to be no food on the shelves or you can't go to the store. Like, you know, this is what I've said they're going to do for a while. And a lot of you were aware of it where, you know, you can't go and buy 
or sell without having it. You can't, you know, you probably wouldn't even be able to have a bank account. I mean, who even gave them the right to do the contact tracing? Who, you know, what system did it go through? How long was the testing done that this thing is even accurate if any of this stuff really was going on? Nobody asked any questions like that. It's just boom, boom, boom. The, the uh, you know, they came out, they don't, you know, they tell you like, even like I try to think of it from hypothetically living in a world where I believe that this stuff is going on. And they come out with a jab so fast, right? A magic potion so fast. And then there's all these other diseases that they still don't have cures for. But they, oh, they just came out well. And then they're like, well, we can't say it's 100%. Oh, okay, but I'll still get it. Oh, but it doesn't make you immune from this or that or this or that or that. But we still need to make sure everyone has it because then they won't get as sick. But what if we want to get as sick? What if we're willing to take a chance? Oh, no, no, you're not allowed to. Why? Because we said so. No, it's not going to work. So the people need to rise up. These people who are in charge who make these decisions are slipping. And I'm not just saying that, I, I, you know, look, I'm, not, I'm never optimistic. I'm always negative. But I'm telling you right now, there are more people waking up and seeing their bull crap. And if they don't want any type of upheaval or unless they're trying to get something like that, which would make no sense, then they need to figure out a new plan or they need to ease off the gas. Because if they think that they're going to do this with food shortages too in the, in the fall, then people are just going to start forming their own communities. That's what they're going to start doing. And they're not going to oblige by their system anymore. They're not going to pay taxes. They're not going to listen, you know, and they're all going to barter and work with each other. It will happen because there are 50% of the population who don't have it. And I guarantee you that the people, you know, people such as myself and you guys who listen, a lot of you homestead, a lot of you can do things on your own. You don't need big brother. None of us need big brother. Then that's the route we're going to go because we're not getting it. So just be happy with the ones that you got. And enjoy the, the countdown on their lives that you've put on their lives by lying and tricking them and them believing it and doing it to themselves. But the rest of us aren't falling for it. And you could do whatever bull crap you try to do. shut down the food source. Then guess what? We're all going to grow our own food on our own land until you get those things that go boom, boom, bang, bang away from the, all the civilians who aren't going to give it up. Then you're going to have a problem. So back off. That's my advice. Back the F off. I apologize if that offended anybody, but I'm getting a little pissed off seeing this because there are clueless people who are affected by this, and it is sad. There are, clue there are people who don't want to get it, and it's not even for the reasons that we all believe. They just don't want to be involved with this stuff, and they're a little hesitant, again, to put something in them, but it's not because of Big Brother or this or that. And there are, people are just getting anxiety and panic attacks and depression. This is adding to so many more problems, and of course, that's what they want, but at some point, you got to just say enough's enough as people here. These leaders are supposed to work for us. Clearly, they, they are not. They don't work for us. They do not care about us. We have no say in any of it. So that's when you push back. And this is the time to do it. And hopefully make people realize this isn't a republic. This is controlled. This is all part of a plan. And they're using cell phones now to make people self-isolate and self-quarantine because you might have you might have been near someone who was near someone who was near someone who knew was near someone who's was near someone's cousin who had, whose dog might have tested positive at some point in their life or had the flu. So we'll shut down all the industries, make people <laughs> unable to get food because they're afraid of getting a sneeze or a cough. And the, and the statistics that they tell us are so weak anyway that the people should, the, the common thing, if this was a really functioning government around the world, all these governments would be, all right, well, having people starve to death and, and go, having the old, whole economy tank and all this stuff would be more important to protect than worrying about uh, hundreds of thousands of people when hundreds of thousands of people do die from things like texting and driving, drinking and driving, other things. You know, common sense says all these things. This is how people should respond, but they're not because they just see what's on the TV. They just believe what's on the TV and they just listen to the bull crap that comes out of the TV. And that's the problem. I apologize if during the video, you know, I'm not showing as many pictures of the articles and things like that. That's because the algorithm's just reading and looking and they're, they're even like, they have pictures that are getting filtered in and out. They don't want people using stuff like that. So I know a lot of you just listen and, and, you know, you're not staring at the screen, you just put it on and listen anyway, so it's almost like a podcast. And obviously, when I'm putting in video clips for something else, for another purpose, I'm showing you a music video and breaking it down, it's a lot different. But, I mean, I don't need to show you pictures of people with masks and things like that. You obviously know what I'm talking about. So, just for that reason, 
That's why you'll see my logo and things like that on the screen more often if you're somebody who stares at the screen. You know, I, I, that's why, in case you're wondering. So check out the website if you have a call for an uprising.com. If you're somebody in the UK who's seeing these things, feeling these effects, please post videos or anything you have that's going on over there. People are interested and want to see it, including myself. I want to thank the Patreons because you it keeps me here on YouTube. So thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you for listening, thumbsing up the videos and sharing the information. The people will rise. Oh, yes. The people will rise. I thank you for listening again. God bless you and your families.